In this video, we will make a um, simple section. Uh, this isn't going to be a perspective section like this. It's just going to be a, a 2D line drawing. Um, and we're going to make it using only SketchUp and Illustrator. We're doing this tutorial for a section, but you can use the same uh, workflow or strategy for any type of drawing, whether it's a floor plan or even axonometric. So we'll start with our SketchUp model. As you can see, I already have uh, the section cut that I want, um, but I don't want the rest of my building, so I'm actually adding a second section cut um, in the opposite direction. That's going to essentially hide um, the backdrop of my building, just because it was getting a little bit too uh, complex for the view that I wanted. And you can see the strategy for cutting sections like this. You could do some really cool um, cutaway axonometric drawings too. But this is the section I want. As you can see, it's um, fairly clean uh, without all that information that's in the backdrop. You can see I already created a scene that I wanted um, to save and export to Illustrator. Um, so now we can go ahead, make our hidden line style, uh, turn on our profiles, switch our layers to color by layer, um, go into our edge settings and change the color by material. And as you can see, now we have um, all of our lines are colored to their respective layer. And the first export I want to do is just the lines. So I'm shutting off, or I'm turning the section cut to white. Um, so now I can go ahead and export my lines as a PDF. And I just want to make sure that I export all of my um, passes as the same size PDF. Um, so now this is just my lines. And now I want to do just the section cut. So I uh, change my section cut back to black and I can go ahead and turn off my edges and my profiles and now I can export the same PDF. And you really could export everything in, as one PDF but I think just for me and even maybe for you it's easier just to split these things up so once you get to Illustrator it's as clean um, and cut as possible without having to get things too jumbled out. And now I'll export just my shadows, and this will be a JPEG because a PDF won't pick up shadows. And I'll just scale that later. We don't have to worry about um, the resolution of it. So now we can open up all three of our exports from SketchUp and Illustrator. And the first thing I want to do is go into my lines export and go ahead and separate uh, the different layers that I had in SketchUp. And this is a pretty simple drawing, so I'm probably not going to do too much um, altering of the line weights, but like I said, I, I always like to keep things as clean as possible. So I'm still separating these lines onto different layers, even though in the end, I actually, I do think I just leave everything at the same line weight. Next, I go into my section cut export, select one of the black pieces, choose select by fill color. So I select all the section cut, and then I'll just copy it go into my lines layer or lines file, make a new layer, just call it section cut or something. And then uh, paste in place the section cut. So now I, it's really clean. I have everything separated on different layers. So now the first thing I want to do is use the Pathfinder tool and click merge with all of my section fills selected so that it turns it into one object versus the multiple objects that is exported from SketchUp. Now that it's all one object, it's going to be really easy for us to add um, the section cut outline. So what I'll do is I'll just make a new layer for the, for the outline. And I'll go back to the fill. And all I'm going to do is uh, copy that fill and paste it onto the outline layer. And then change my fill color to just white. And as you can see, sometimes it'll fill in some places, but that's no problem. You can just delete them out very easily. So now that I have those separated, I'll go ahead and change the fill to white, like I said. And then um, now that we have that white fill, I can go up to my outline layer. And it's still black because that was what it was originally. But if all I have to do is switch um, the fill um, to the actual outline. And as you can see, very quickly, very easily, I have a true outline around that section. And now, of course, we can adjust the line thickness to how we want. Understanding how to use Pathfinder 
uh, to merge section cut exports from SketchUp. It's probably one of the most useful and time-saving things you'll ever know uh, because manually adding outlines to sections can really take a long time. So I made my section cut fill white because I want to add an actual pattern on top of it. So I'll just make a new layer called sec section cut hatch. I'll copy the white fill, paste it in place on that new layer. And if I go to my patterns, basic lines, I can just choose one of these horizontal line patterns. If I do right click, transform, rotate, I'll choose 45 degrees and only transform the pattern. And now I can scale it uh, to the correct density that I want. And the next thing I want to do is lower the opacity on it because it's a little bit too dark. And just like that, with very little effort, we have a really clean section cut with really great line hierarchy. The next thing I'm, I want to do is add a thicker line to the very, very bottom of the drawing just to, to highlight the base and where the, where the actual building meets the ground a little bit more. Now we can go ahead and copy in our shadows layer. And all we have to do is scale it to the artboard because we know it's the same aspect ratio. And then I can just change the appearance of this image to multiply. And as you can see, it'll let everything that's behind it show through. And then we can adjust the opacity so it's not too dark. Now I just wanna come in here and add a couple uh, section cut lines that didn't really get exported from SketchUp. Uh, this is typically gonna be like on railings and uh, windows, really wherever you don't have actual uh, 3D ge geometry that won't be read as a section cut in, such, in SketchUp. Uh, you have to manually add that stuff inside of Illustrator right now. And uh, typically you wanna have as much stuff in 3D as possible so you don't have to do this but usually it doesn't take too long to fix. The next thing I'm doing is adding a earth hatch to the bottom of my drawing. So I use the pen tool to draw in the base, and then I use the basic pattern graphics uh, built into Illustrator. And there's tons of options in here. You just have to pick which one matches your presentation best. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm just using these, uh, these dashed lines, and once I place them in there, I just want to scale them up a little bit. And then I'll lower the opacity so they're not as dark. And because this is a black and white drawing, adding textures like that really helps, uh, I guess, kind of narrate uh, your, your project or your design. So you just have to decide whenever you're doing a drawing like this, how much detail you want to go into when it comes to adding textures like this. For example, here I decided I wanted to add uh, a very simple hatch pattern that represented this tunnel as being concrete. And one of the reasons why I did that was because it's such a, a large space on my drawing and it's so simple. So adding a little bit of texture to it uh, kind of amplifies its presence rather than having it just be that giant white space. Next, I'm going to add a simple glass hatch pattern to all of my uh, glass in the section drawing. And once again, this is just uh, adding just another level of detail uh, to this glass and allowing whoever's looking at it to understand that it, that it is it does have a transparent material on it. So now I'm pretty happy with all my line weights, so I can start adding in my uh, vegetation and entourage. I'm just using some uh, vector trees and vector plants uh, just to really start to give this drawing some more life. Another thing I'm, I'm using here is a, a grass, elevation of grass, that's a PNG that I just uh, made completely black. So it, it becomes like what you would uh, picture grass to look like if you're cutting a section through it, I guess. So now I just want to add uh, in a couple people. And you'll notice I'm doing this very quickly. If, if this is for a presentation, definitely spend some more time narrating these people in the, in the drawing. You should really make it seem like every, each person has their own story. You should have people sitting in the chairs, someone giving a lecture. Uh, don't do it this quickly unless it's just for like a desk crit or something. It's always good to have something in there for scale. 
Now what I'm doing is pretty random. I decided to add in this crate that was in place of just a box. But I think that's a good example of how you can actually like bump up the detail of some of the objects that you had in SketchUp using 2D uh, vector drawings in Illustrator. And it's just cool uh, to really start to um, take your drawing to the next level without having to worry about uh, actually modeling some of this stuff in 3D. Now I'm gonna take some time to annotate this with elevation tags, uh, structure grid lines, and then some labels for some of the spaces. And for drawing like this, this process is not very technical at all. As you can see, it's almost, it's more of a graphic um, add-on than anything. And it's, it's really starting to give whoever's looking at your drawing a better sense of scale and a better of understanding of, of how this drawing relates uh, to your other drawings. And right now I'm placing these. These, are, these labels are made completely in Illustrator, but you can also add these grid lines in SketchUp if you wanna make, make sure they're a little bit more precise. But like I said, for me, uh, manually placing them in Illustrator is completely fine. It's a simple drawing and it, it really doesn't take long at all. Now I'm gonna label some of the spaces because I'm picturing this drawing to be on like an 11 by 17 or something, I actually have, the scale is large enough for me to actually type in uh, the actual names inside the spaces. But sometimes if the drawing's too small, you can always just use a legend and just um, label the rooms with numbers. So as a finishing touch, I wanna show you how to make the section cut jump off the page even more. I'm gonna start with this this bottom uh, baseline. And if I select that line and I go to effects, stylize, I can add a drop shadow. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, move the offset a little bit closer in and maybe drop the opacity a little bit. But when you do this, you can start to see how much depth you get um, behind that section line. And it's really, it's a small detail, but in the end, when you print this off, if you print one off with that drop shadow and one without, uh, you might you might find that it actually adds a lot. This is this is something that may not work for every presentation, but it's just one of those really cool tricks that I wanted to share because I think it can actually add a ton to your drawing. And as you can see, I went ahead and added another drop shadow to the rest of the outlines. That one was a, little, a slightly lighter drop shadow. And now you have uh, a really nicely done vector drawing in really like less than an hour. You can export as a PNG, JPEG, PDF, whatever you want. And before I end this, I just wanna show you one last quick trick. Uh, if you shut off all your shadows, and I went ahead and shut off the drop shadows too, just to make it a very simple, clean black and white drawing, if you Export this as, a, or just save it to whatever, and then open it up in Photoshop. You can do some like really cool uh, things with inverting the black to white lines. So I'm just gonna open up that uh, export that doesn't have any shadows inside of Photoshop. And um, as you can see, it just comes in as an image. The only, obviously the downside of this is that it groups everything together. So you no longer have the ability to edit the lines. But uh, this is kind of like that final step if you wanted to do something like this. What I did as I, with that layer selected, I just hit Control I and it immediately inverses everything. And you have your white lines on top of that black surface. And if you change that layer, uh, layers mode to screen and make sure your drawing is uh, in color mode because we did have a grayscale drawing. And then you can start to add uh, colored backdrops to this and you can really get that cool uh, blueprint style. Um, sometimes a presentation might call for a drawing like this so I just thought it's cool to understand that you don't necessarily have to make this drawing um, as this white line drawing in the first place. You can always do a traditional black and white and then come back later and invert it. But yeah, I hope this video gave you a better understanding how to make a section using SketchUp and Illustrator. Thanks for watching.